back to my channel in another Camp NaNoWriMo vlog. I did a lot more work on brainstorming, outlining, plotting, all that kind of stuff. If you remember my last vlog, I was feeling really behind just because I had COVID and then I wasn't able to really plot and plan as much as I wanted to before starting the project. So that being said, I do not think I'm going to make my 25k goal just because it's already July 11th and I'm like, I don't know where the time is going and what's happening with that. I feel like maybe aim for 15k instead and drop 10k just so I have more time to really plot it out and then hopefully I can get that extra 10k in there and meet my 25k goal by August 20th because that's the day before my school year starts and if I can get my whole draft done before my school year starts that would be so awesome. So that way I have time to like sit it down get used to my new class schedule and just go from there. So on, I think it was Sunday or Saturday. So on Saturday, today is Tuesday, I went with my friend to a coffee shop and I just kind of talked through some plot points with her and she helped me kind of figure out a little bit more about the trajectory of the structure that I'm thinking about for the book as well as those themes that I was debating because so I really wanted to come up with like my main themes my main ideas of political events and things that will influence my characters before I started writing particularly I wanted to focus on that historical aspect doing historical magical realism a Jewish tale <laughs> and my idea right now is that it's about sisters who are dealing with their Jewishness before the start of the Holocaust in America. So trying to explore Jewish identity pre-Holocaust and post-Holocaust, as well as dealing with Jim Crow and all of the segregation stuff in the United States and kind of like paralleling what was happening and Jews' roles in civil rights movement, all of that kind of fun political stuff, especially right now with the rise of anti-Semitism. I just really want to write about being Jewish. My avenue for that is this like magical realism world that interweaves with real historical events but also deals with a lot of Jewish folklore and events and timelines and all of that kind of stuff. So it's just a, it's a lot of stuff to work with that I'm trying to narrow down so that I can place my characters in there and I have the idea of the two sisters so I'm really liking that aspect of it so far. I just need to kind of flesh it out a little bit more and then I can start writing. I think I could probably even start writing now if I want to do a little bit more discovery writing before finalizing some of my plot points, but just because I've had trouble with discovery writing in the past, I, I kind of want to wait and do a little bit more plotting before I start. But we'll see. I'm I'm open to possibilities of all of the writing gods to bless me with my story. I don't know. <laughs> Forget that. So the last few days, yesterday especially, I got a lot of little research things done and more plot points figured out. And I also fed geese. Some even ate out of my hand. It was kind of cool. I'd never fed geese out of my hand, but my brother is super into it. So he took me along with some of his other friends to feed geese. And that was really restorative and in nature and all that kind of stuff. Also, my parents' house has had a lot of visitors, furry visitors lately. Some deer, some turkeys. We had a bunch of crows in the yard the other day. It was quite eventful. And then, of course, my dogs. So <laughs> today, so far, I have been reading some people's writing. I have a critique group that meets tonight, Tuesday night. I haven't been to a meeting in a while so I decided to go tonight. So I've been reading other people's works. I still have a few more to read to get ready for tonight. And then I took the dogs for a walk. I pre-made some chili stuff for dinner tonight with my stepmom and that's been about it so far. I And then I've recorded another video for you guys that'll probably come out before this one just because it might be a little easier to edit in time and I wanted to get a little bit more vlog content and writing done for this video. So again today's Tuesday the 11th. Yeah so that one's all about first drafts and advice that I have since this is my sixth first draft of a novel that I've written or am starting to write I guess. So hopefully if any of you find that useful you watch that after this one. Yay! I'm going to have some lunch, finish up reading and critiquing. It's almost 1 30 now. 1 30? And I already walked the dogs. I'm good on that front.
Wednesday. It is the 12th, day 12 of Camp NaNoWriMo and I spent the last hour working on short stories. I have a magazine that I would love to submit to. That's due Saturday so I decided to work on that to start my day. So I've been working for about an hour. I'm gonna pause get more coffee, try to transition into creative project stuff after I get this submission in. So I just have a bit of revising to do and then I can put it out there and see what happens. soon but it is day 17 now of Camp NaNoWriMo. This month has been flying by there's still so much work to do and I'm subbing every single day this week for the summer school program for the district I used to work for because they kept me on the list to sub summer school but they had taken me off the like employment thing so I have to go through all of the new employment stuff again but I wouldn't have worked July anyways because my assistantship with my university ended at the end of June or like mid-June really. I decided this week because I know myself and I know that when I sub I have a tendency not to do any creative work when I get home. I'm usually just too exhausted from working with kids. It's mentally draining <laughs> and uh, I mean I love working with kids but like it, it comes with a cost you know and I've been finding that the other days that I've subbed this month I just really didn't want to do any writing when I got home. So I decided to wake up extra early. I got up a little after 5 a.m. this morning. Right now it is 5 42. So I made some coffee, let the dogs out, that kind of stuff, looked at the sun rising for a minute, and now I'm here. It was really chilly earlier because I had my jacket on and now I'm really hot though. So I love that for me. I think at 5 45 I'm gonna put on a timer for one hour. I might work a little bit longer than that depending on how the session goes but I have to leave the house by 7 20 so I'll probably at the latest stop writing at 7 so hour to hour 15 wrapping up whatever I'm working on. By 7 I'll stop get ready for work and then I'll be at work from 8 to 12 30 and then my plan is to come home nap and then maybe relook at whatever I write this morning before bed or sometime in the afternoon. I want to try to do the going back and edit as I go because I haven't really done that with my last few projects. I've been very much like writing and not looking at what I wrote and then just like keep going and this time around I want to take it slower. So what I'm going to try to do instead is I'm going to try to count hours that I work for the rest of the month and try to do at least an hour of work a day excluding weekends and I try to do more or less depending on how I'm feeling but that's kind of where my mind's at in terms of goals. I have a minute left on my handy dandy watch. I'm gonna go and get writing. We'll see how today goes. I'm not really a morning person but I'm hoping that despite the headache I can get some work done. I just wrote for an hour, a bit over an hour actually. It's 6 57 a.m. so I need to start getting ready for work now because I gotta leave in like 30 minutes but I'm really happy with what I wrote. Definitely not like my best work. I am happy with it. It's a start. I wrote uh, 636 words in this scene and 529 words in the second scene. So a bit over a thousand words in that hour which is really good and I feel like that finished off chapter one. 
which as a whole is sitting at about 1973 words. I had deleted um, the previous stuff that I did a couple weeks ago. I just put it down into the notes. I don't feel it really fits anymore. I think it was just me discovering a little bit more about the characters. So I just added those back down to my notes in case I want to refer to them later or use them later. But I decided to switch and do th all third person, which is usually my go-to anyways. But the stuff I wrote beforehand was more first person discovery stuff so I don't think it really fits. So right now I'm sitting at a little under 2,000 words for my project. Yeah I'm just counting the hours. Oh my goodness! Hopefully I can keep this momentum going for the rest of the week and get some work done before I go to work. I think that will help me a lot in terms of getting stuff done this week. I better get going to work. <laughs> so it is 6 34 a.m and the 18th and yesterday after I got back from work I ended up not really doing much other writing besides doing a little bit of plotting work and planning and like writing an extra sentence right before bed. The after afternoon I spent reading The Inheritance of Orchidia, Orchidia Divina. Um, my friend loaned me this book. It's magical realism fantasy and that's kind of the genre that I'm reading in or I'm trying to write in so it's really helpful for me when I'm writing to try to read something in a similar genre. Author is Zordeta Cordova. Cordova? Uh, hopefully I'm pronouncing that right. I did not study Spanish but it's really 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 good so far so if any of you are looking for a magical realism book to read look at this one very good i think my friend read it for a latin american class that she was in in undergrad it was published in 2021 so it's only been out a couple of years so definitely check it out it is a beautiful book and it it's so nice to read a really good book or ones because i feel like the last trad well the last trad published book i read was garbage i it was i wouldn't even want to do a review on it because it was just it had a lot of really good things going for it but I just it had a lot of missed potential that if it had a developmental editor it, it would have been so much better but the dialogue was awful and like the prose was just it felt really lazy to me there's this big plot hole one of the characters disappears at the end of the novel like not like as a plot point they just disappear until the very end of the novel and it was a novel that was going back and forth in third person limited so the fact that one just dis disappeared from the narrative was just a little like that was uh not supposed to happen that was a uh, mistake that should have been caught by an editor but wasn't <sighs> So that made me sad to read, especially because I had to read that for my summer class that I was in in June. It was reading as writers and I just, oh my goodness, I wrote a 2000 word discussion post when it was supposed to be like 600 word and then we had to write a craft analysis essay and so I wrote mine on that book and maybe if y'all are interested I can read my craft analysis essay to you guys <laughs> what I thought of it and I'll say the book but it it has mixed reviews online I think Goodreads gave it four out of five stars but it definitely has a few one star reviews on there I gave it two stars because it had a few good things going for it in terms of like the politics and representation and stuff like that so so yeah, if you're interested in that, it was Detransition Baby by Tori Peters. It was long listed for the Women's Prize in Fiction and I have a lot of thoughts on it. So if you want a review of that book, let me know in the comments and maybe I'll do one if I get enough likes on this video. If I get 20 likes on this video. <laughs> if I get my sub count up to 400 then I will do a Detransition Baby review for you guys. <laughs> I have a lot of thoughts and I still have a lot of thoughts even though I read the book mid-June or beginning of June so say love you. Well now it is 6 40. I was not as good about getting up early today and I also decided to get ready for work before sitting down to write. I think yesterday I was definitely running a bit behind to get to work because of doing a full hour and then I wanted to finish up the scene that I was working on so I was just running a bit behind for work so I thought I would get dressed and do all that stuff before writing and now I'm like I spent too much time getting ready and rethinking how to do my hair today. <laughs> 
which is not that big of a deal for teaching up to uh, sixth graders, but kids be judgy. So I think I'm gonna aim for 30 minutes today, this morning, and I'll try to do more this afternoon, but I definitely wanted to at least finish up chapter one because I got to a good scene ending space, but I think I want one more scene to wrap it up. And I need to decide if I'm gonna do my critique group next week and what I want to submit for that as well. I figured I might as well because I can start to get feedback on this right away, which is not my normal process. I usually wait till something's done before getting feedback from anyone, but I think because this is a creative project also for my thesis and all that stuff, I do want to spend a little extra time going back and working forward instead of just going all the way through it. I also wanted to show you guys what I've been doing to help me outline. So for outlining, I made this kind of template here where I just have a table that I did, insert table, and I did a two by two, oops, two by two, and I did chapter, what happens, and for the chapter, I put heading three. So that way, when I go over here, I'll have this stuff. And I did heading three because I felt like the other ones would be too big. <laughs> and I didn't want it to be too crazy. The only thing that irks me about it is that the what happens is up here and the chapter is down here. But it's because of this heading three. I guess I could try to do heading four. But So I've got chapter one, chapter two, chapter three. I have an idea for chapter five in terms of pacing. I only put ten chapter slots to start. I have an ideas page, character names, and settings. I'm not going to use all of it, but this is kind of my folder for my BSU creative project. And then I'm using Scrivener, uh, if you couldn't tell already, to write. So this is chapter one. This is what I've got so far. And this is the scene I'm starting on. <laughs> I also need to start doing all my teaching outlining and stuff for teaching a rhetoric and writing class in the fall at my university. A part of me was thinking I would try to start doing that this afternoon, but we'll see how I feel. It's annoying. I'm really tired. <laughs> I'm very tired today. <laughs> there you are. <laughs> That's really pretty. For your last. Books and beer. And beer. <laughs> okay, so I just had a shower epiphany. And <laughs> For other writers out there, I think a lot of us do this where we read something or something happens or some music is playing and then all of a sudden we come up with this idea and it sounds really crazy and I don't know if it's actually going to work. But as you know already from this vlog, I've been struggling with the plot for this book. I've been kind of outlining and coming up with ideas and plotting kind of chapter by chapter and discovering it a lot more than I usually do for a project. And I do still think a part of it is that I'm just getting in my head about it being my creative project and my thesis, but I was reading the, the same book that I talked about earlier, The Inheritance of Orchidea Divina. Divina. I don't know, this idea just kind of like sparked and, I thought, and then I, I had to shower and stuff because I'm getting ready to go meet my friend, an undergrad friend, and I had this idea, and it sounds kind of crazy, but what if I kind of combine the idea of this creative project with the premise for the novel I wrote last May and kind of see where they meet in the middle, kind of? Again, I don't know if it's gonna work, but like I have 200 pages written already, a little over 200 pages of this novel that I wrote last May, also about Jewish identity and surrealism and all that 
that kind of stuff and I had this idea that I could take it a step further with this the idea of generational trauma which is one of the themes in this book I'm reading as well and the inheritance of a curse. I think that goes really well with the magical realism that I want to explore especially because in the novel that I had they were interacting with giants which in the Jewish tradition are half angel half mortal and like dreamscapes all this other stuff. If you want to see the process of me writing that novel check out my writing in the wilderness series. I have a playlist I'll link it below. It was really fun to write but I have I haven't touched it since I wrote it really so it's been a year. I don't know I was just kind of thinking I think my writing has changed a lot even within the last year since going to grad school. I don't know I think I could play around with it this week so I might take a break from writing. I still have some ideas on the the progression of where it's at right now but yesterday I didn't do any writing and today I haven't so far I was just reading and I'm getting ready. Um, anyways yeah I had that idea and I feel like I, I needed to record it. I feel really excited about it. I feel like it might not work. I need to figure out like the logistics between the different characters that I have but I think it could be a really cool premise if it can work. I don't know if I'm skilled enough as a writer to make it work so it might need a lot of work, plotting work, to get it to mesh together in a way that works because right now I think the novel that I had like works but it's very surface level and I would need to go in and like add an additional subplot anyways if it works that way. So yeah this process for this creative project has so far been all over the place <laughs> already but I did decide to just take the weekend off especially with seeing my friend this afternoon I need to leave in a few minutes here I feel that that will also like lift the weight off my shoulders a little bit because I do have a lot to write still in terms of this new timeline and integrating and rewriting a lot of the the old book the book that I that I wrote it could be really cool if it works might not work. <laughs> I feel like ending with a burst of inspiration is a great way to end a vlog and end a week. I wrote about a good 3,000 words to my project, a little bit more than that I think with all my like plotting and notes and stuff which is definitely not as much as I wanted to. I was hoping I would get to like a 5,000 word mark but you know this novel wants to go at a very slow pace and I need to just let it go at the pace that it wants. As I think we get in our head a lot about we have to go really fast and especially during challenges like Camp Nano, like the goal is to write super fast, the urge to get work out there and produce really fast. You know we consume nowadays at a very fast pace and that includes books but writing books has always been a very slow process and I believe that art should take its time. I mean if you're running on inspiration go for it but I don't think anything should be forced unless it wants to be and it wants to come out of you in that that way. So I'm trying to take it slower than I normally do. I'm trying not to beat myself up about it. I am a little bit. Yesterday I caught myself feeling really guilty because I didn't write anything yesterday and I need to remember that it's okay not to write anything in a day. Sometimes life gets in the way and sometimes inspiration isn't there and that's okay and you can force it but I don't. I'm trying not to force it which is a little bit harder with <laughs> deadlines. That's that's it for me this week. So there's one more week of Camp Nano. My goal now is I'm just gonna try to see if I can combine these ideas. Thank you guys so much for watching. Subscribe if you're not subscribed. Make sure to like this video if you liked it. It really helps my channel grow. I'm hoping and aiming for 400 subscribers by the end of August. It's one of my goals. So if you're not subscribed, please subscribe. I know a lot of you who watch my videos aren't, so I will see y'all soon with the next one. Bye and subscribe. Ha ha ha!